Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with AMD, who have recently launched the Ryzen 3000 series of CPUs, but also the RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT, and they are competing very well with NVIDIA in the mid-range uh, segment of the market, but there is of course a cry for consumers to launch higher end SKUs to compete with uh, NVIDIA's RTX 2080 Super as well as RTX 2080 Ti, and hopefully bring down the price of those cards. Well, we've got some good news for you. So let's start with the 4096 shader RDNA based GPU which will see the light of day in the fourth quarter of this year. This information comes to us via Twitter user 0x22h who has posted it publicly, but they claim to have gotten this information via official sources. For obvious reasons, they're not going to go into more details of how they procured this information, but to be fair to 0x22h, they have a pretty good track record of posting leaks and rumours, so I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. Nevertheless, 4096 shaders is a pretty large jump compared to the 2560 shaders that we see in the RX 5700 XT. And it's not like that is a slouch in performance. So theoretically, we should have a GPU here from AMD that could easily surpass the RTX 2080, possibly even uh, battling and taking the performance crown from the RTX 2080 Ti. That is assuming the rest of the specifications uh, match up to the number of shaders. So for example, we don't see a drastic cut in the core frequency because maybe you know the GPU ends up being extremely power hungry or AMD are concerned on how to cool the thing or whatever. So that's one potential downfall, but Assuming that's not an issue, that we see uh, reasonable efficiency with the drivers and the scheduler. So assuming that's not an issue, the only other thing that could hold this thing back would be memory bandwidth. Currently, the RX 5700 XT is powered by GDDR6 memory running at 14 GBPS at a uh, bus width of 256 bit that provides the same amount of bandwidth and exactly the same specification actually as the 2070 and 2080 vanilla from uh, NVIDIA when they launched um, last year. So basically 448 gigabytes per second. Obviously that would be nowhere near ample enough to uh, power 4096 shaders. So there are two ways they could increase the memory bandwidth. The first way would be to crank up the clock frequencies of the memory. The second way would be to increase the width of the bus, or a combination of both. For example, they could go with a 320-bit bus with memory running at like 15 GBPS. That would certainly be one way to go. It's going to be really interesting though if AMD do launch this GPU, what the price is going to be. Clearly, AMD have done the whole debated thing with the RX 5700 XT, essentially trying to outprice NVIDIA. So, if they do launch this card at a reasonable price, it could put NVIDIA under a lot of pressure. But then again, uh, AMD could also decide to maybe not undercut them so substantially as what they have done in the past. I can almost guarantee you, not from a source or anything, but just through pure logic, that AMD will also launch a variant of this GPU with fewer shaders active, much like they've done in the past with Vega 56, Vega 64, or the 5700 and indeed the 5700 XT. I would probably imagine that they'll keep with the same configurations we've seen from them previously. So. That would be 64 compute units, which of course is the 4096 uh, shaders we have here, and also a 56 compute unit model. It'll be really curious to see though what the performance of this GPU is. And it also ties in rather nicely with another leak from Kamichi on Twitter, who has provided a, drive, a set of driver entries for uh, numerous AMD cards, but the most interesting one is GFX 1030. 
So there's a couple of ways you can take these entries, or this particular entry. The first is that this actually marries up with the uh, 4096 uh, shader GPU, the highest end. Or it's possible that it's not for this. Kamichi actually believes that this GPU is not uh, the 4096 shader model. In fact, it belongs to the next generation RDNA cards, and instead, uh, GFX 12, uh, 1012, sorry, GFX 1012 is the GPU, uh, the, the higher end uh, uh, RDNA GPU, and GFX 1030 is the next generation. So the next generation cards, of course, launch next year, and it would appear that they've got things like ray tracing. What other changes they've got in the architecture, we don't really know. There does appear to be some substantial changes if the hybrid ray tracing pattern is accurate because if it is accurate then obviously with the methods that they're going to be employing to run a hybrid ray tracing on the gpu there has to be some changes just fundamentally because well otherwise it wouldn't work so that makes me wonder if we're going to see increases in uh, ipc and other tweaks yeah so amd certainly are not resting on its butt when it comes to gpu technology and it's going to be really curious what type of pressure this puts uh, NVIDIA under. Oh, and while I've got a moment as well, I'm discussing AMD GPUs. I've been doing some research for an upcoming video. I'm pretty close to being done with it. It's taking me a while. But I've been rereading a few interviews um, from AMD. And there's actually a quote from them that uh, I'd like to bring to your attention because of Arcturus. So if you missed the Arcturus news, we've been hearing about Arcturus for so long. In fact, some people suspected it was the uh, successor to Vega slash uh, Navi. So in other words, we would see uh, it almost like a new architecture. Then there was rumors that it was going to be a console-based APU or GPU for a console or some other custom design but of course none of those things turned out to be accurate instead it's an upcoming vega based gpu but with the graphics portion of the gpu removed so instead it is focused purely on compute um, but there's a very interesting quote i found from uh, an interview from forrest norod and he said and i quote there's going to be some overlap between the two I think Lisa alluded to this earlier, where GCN and Vega will stick around for some parts and applications, but Narve is really our new gaming architecture, so I don't want to go beyond that. You'll see us have both parts for gaming applications and non-gaming applications. End quote. Now, that's not particularly that informative. It doesn't give us that much more information about the part, but it's kind of interesting that that quote has been staring us in the face for some time in fact i even remember i'm pretty certain i covered that so it's just kind of interesting that we have actually had that information kind of staring us in the face that amd will still be releasing parts for vega and now arcturus of course is uh, going to be released indeed uh when i launched uh, sorry when i released the video uh back in march that uh RDNA, well actually it was called, of course just known as Navi back then, but when uh, I released the video that uh, Navi's second generation would be uh, featuring ray tracing, the same source did tell me that AMD want to focus uh, their attention on creating cards that would just be for compute as well. So basically that they're going to almost go with two different designs. One focus for graphics slash gaming, which of course would be for discrete GPUs, APUs, consoles, that type of thing. And then another GPU, which would be almost like an ASIC and designed purely for the highest potential compute performance. Now let's move over to everything Intel because there's been a lot of movement on Intel, including some stuff for their upcoming discrete GPUs, which may give us an indicator of the performance of them. Uh, but I do want to uh, bring to your attention first yet another leak for the Intel Core i7-10-65G7. 
I'd like to thank viewer Ben for emailing this over to me. Uh, he emailed me at paul at redgamingtech.com. Anyway, uh, this particular entry is on Sysoft Sandra, and it is f reporting itself to be a 65 watt part, which I take issues with. I don't think Sysoft Sandra is reporting that correctly. That's putting it mildly, so I would not take that with any uh, any level of seriousness to 65 watts but what you can do is at the very least look at the rest of the specifications and it basically confirms a lot of what we've already seen before uh, that's why I'm going to kind of glaze over it in this video but it is nice to, just for us to kind of take a look at together anyway so it is of course on the ice lake it is of course an ice lake CPU four cores eight threads and according to the results that we have here, it's running at 1.3 gigahertz for the base frequency and can run up to 3.9 gigahertz uh, with the memory controller at 3.6 gigahertz IMC. So yeah, uh, the cache configuration is also what you'd expect given what we know about Ice Lake. Four times 512 kilobytes. So each core of course has its own uh, level two cache of 512 kilobytes and 8 megabytes total of level 3 cache. I must say I am actually quite interested in seeing what Ice Lake is capable of after all of the hype. Uh, it's just a pity that we have to wait so long for it on the desktop. And now I want to move over to a whole bunch of Intel graphics stuff. In 2020, Nvidia and AMD will have more competition in the marketplace as Intel prepares to launch its discrete range of GPUs. This effort is, of course, headed by former RTG boss Raja Kodori. So there was a oopsie from Intel, and that is because of a test driver that made its way onto the internet. The version for this driver is, as always, very easy to remember. 26.20.16.9999. So if you cast your eyes over the various entries, the most obvious thing you'll see at the very top are various Rocket Lake entries. Uh, so Rocket Lake are upcoming Intel CPUs, of course, and these will include integrated UHD graphics. Uh, from these particular entries anyway, we see either 16 or 32 execution units, but there's also a Pro series as well. Uh, so that's kind of cool, but doesn't tell us a whole lot. To me, the most interesting set of entries, though, are slightly further down and are known as Intel G DG1 and also DG2 discrete graphics. And these are listed under Generation 12. So the first entry is Intel RUHD graphics Gen 12 LP. And then right below that, we have uh, DG2 HP 512, HP 256, and finally HP 128. Now I do wonder, and it's a conclusion several other people have come to as well, and it's the most logical, if those are the number of execution units on the GPU. So that would actually put this card with an awful lot of performance assuming we have a decent clock frequency and all of the other caveats that you would expect for a GPU. Because Ice Lake um, Generation 11 has 64 execution units and is clocked at around 1100 megahertz. That puts it at around the 1.1, 1.12 technically T-flops of performance. So if you scale that up, to 512 execution units with the same clock frequency then by golly gosh you get around 9 T-flops of performance but it's very unlikely let's just be totally honest here that Intel are going to launch a uh, discrete GPU with a clock frequency of only 1100 megahertz unfortunately we don't really know what clock frequency they're going to get from their GPUs it could be anything from 1.2 gigahertz all the way up to like 2 gigahertz. I have heard some people theorize that they're going for 2 gigahertz, but even if you say that it's around the 1.5 mark, that is still an awful lot of T-flops 
for a GPU. And it does look like as well uh, that these are not necessarily the highest end SKUs in this lineup. So for the clock frequency, it's very unlikely that Intel are going to be running a discrete GPU at just 1.1 gigahertz. Most likely we're going to see at least three, four, five hundred megahertz on top of that. So let's say 1.6, 1.7 gigahertz would not be out of the realms of possibility, obviously, based upon what we've seen from other vendors. And I've actually heard some speculation and some theories, as well as some uh, things kind of through back channels that we could be seeing considerably higher than that, maybe even up to 2 gigahertz for Intel's discrete GPUs. So that would mean that, you know, we could easily have a GPU which hits way over 12, 13, 14 teraflops, depending what they eventually clock the, uh, the GPU at. And that would be pretty darn nice for Intel's first foray into discrete graphics. What we do know is that Intel have confirmed publicly that Tiger Lake will integrate the XE graphics architecture. So Ice Lake, once again, is generation 11. Tiger Lake is generation 12, known as XE. And according to Intel, there will be about a two times performance uplift compared to the GPU found inside of Ice Lake. Now, yes, there is an execution unit difference. The Tiger Lake CPUs have up to 96 execution units, and this puts them a leap higher than the 64 execution units that are found inside Generation 11. But Tiger Lake is reported to be focused on around the 2 TFLOP performance goal, so that is around twice that, once again, of Ice Lake. It does give you some idea of how this GPU is going to clock. For a final point of analysis, we could also look at Tiger Lake. So Ice Lake uses Generation 11, Tiger Lake uses XE. XE you can basically just say is Generation 12. From what Intel have said, Tiger Lake is going to offer twice the performance in terms of iGPU compared to that of Ice Lake and will sport 96 execution units. The top of the line Ice Lake iGPU sports just 64 execution units. So clearly uh, they are also doing other things to increase the performance as well. The 1 versus 2 TFLOPs must be reached other ways and that most logical way would be to also increase the clock frequency as well. Either way it's going to be really interesting what Intel are working on and how it stacks up against the competition and I've said this like a hundred thousand times now but I truly believe next year is going to be amazing for graphics for us as consumers we've got AMD now being really competitive in the graphics arena hopefully next year we'll see RDNA with ray tracing uh, which would be awesome given what we know about the next generation consoles and their time frame of release the next generation consoles themselves some amazing titles, including, of course, Cyberpunk. Intel uh, getting in on the graphics uh, side of things as well, which is great because more competition equal good. And finally, NVIDIA should be shifting to 7nm. And it's going to be very curious what exactly goes on with NVIDIA's architecture and how they decide to pursue ray tracing and also traditional rasterization performance. Well, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you did, then the normal thing, like, share, comment, and subscribe because it helps us out an absolute ton. And don't forget to click the notification icon because subscribing on YouTube is no longer enough, unfortunately. You can also find us on social media, which is linked, of course, in the description of this very video. But for now, take care of yourselves. Have a good day.